Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Before we get into the video, if you could please leave a like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful for you. Uh, thankful to you for that. So I just finished watching Passengers, the 2016 sci-fi drama that is uh, starring Chris Pratt and Jennifer Lawrence. Now it's my second time watching it, uh, but it's been so long that I honestly didn't really remember what happened. Uh, so I was able to kind of experience it again for the first time. And uh, this is going to be a pretty simple review, to be honest, because it's a pretty simple uh, movie. So basically, it's about... Um, so, Earth has become overpopulated, resources are thin, so humanity looks to the stars for a new planet to colonize. So, they uh, recruit a bunch of wealthy people, as well as some skilled people, and they uh, send them uh, over 5,000 people on a starship for a 130-year journey to whatever, the, the new planet. And um, they are in hibernation pods, and uh, Chris Pratt, who's playing Jim, wakes up early by accident, which is supposed to be impossible, but it happens. And uh, he spends over a year on the ship by himself, uh, kind of going insane. And uh, he, basically the movie's tackling the moral dilemma that he's in, which is, does he live uh, does he live the 90 year cycle of his life completely alone, going crazy, or he could honestly just, you know, eject himself out into space, or the third option, which is what he ends up doing, and, uh, yeah, I'd say it's a bad thing to do, but that's why the movie's interesting, right? It's because it's moral ambiguity, and it forces the audience to, uh, question their own beliefs and all that, so what he ends up doing is, uh, he becomes infatuated with a woman named Aurora, who is Jennifer Lawrence, and uh, he tries to not take her out of the pod, but he can't help himself, probably feeling a little bit manic, to be honest, just because of, you know, the space sickness of being alone. And uh, he takes her out of the pod, uh, lies to her, and uh, basically lets her believe that it was also a malfunction, but eventually uh, the bartender, who's like the only other human-looking person on the ship, but who is an android, ends up malfunctioning and uh, breaks the promise that the bartender made to Jim and tells her the truth that uh, Jim, you know, purposely, intentionally took her out of the pod, which is essentially giving her a death sentence because um, there is no obvious, um, there's no way to to put yourself back to sleep. So you're now going to be stuck on the ship until you're, until you're gone. And uh, yeah, so like I said, pretty simple review because it's a pretty simple movie. It's a uh, sort of bite-sized sci-fi drama with uh, two great lead actors and a surprise third lead actor. And um, yeah, overall I felt it was a effective and interesting drama. I felt the moral questions that were posed were interesting and uh, even though this movie has zero action whatsoever uh, it's definitely not a boring one it's still very engaging and gripping just because of the subject matter and the unique situation that the characters have found themselves in but uh, yeah overall i liked it also the visuals the visuals are not a reason to go watch it but they were still noteworthy and you know i really liked the um i like that we got the sort of sci-fi luxury yacht experience if that makes sense like for example there's a pool so like jennifer lawrence goes in a pool that like literally goes out into space through this like glass and stuff and it's just it was cool to see the the rich lifestyle basically um that they're they were supposed to be enjoying which they do get to but it's just obviously not the same because now everything sucks because they're stuck in their situation but yeah uh as for the negative section Honestly, there's not really any major negatives except for one. So actually, I'll, I'll argue two negatives because it's my job to always find something to criticize. Sometimes there isn't, but it's in general, I do purposely try to find stuff to criticize. Uh, so the first thing is, to me, it never blew my mind or made my jaw drop. It was just like pretty okay throughout, pretty good throughout the entire thing. So I felt like it was not... Hmm, what's a good word to use? Maybe like watered down in the sense that they're holding back a little bit. So it's obviously like kind, kind of a taboo situation and moral question that they're tackling, but you know, it's still kind of watered down despite that. So I don't think it's, I honestly think the movie could have been R-rated. We could have thrown in, you know, some, some foul language to 
make things more tense. They already kind of dipped their toes into the nudity. We get to see Chris Pratt's butt quite a bit in this, so why not go the full way at this point? So I felt like maybe it was just a touch holding back and it was just like kind of middling throughout, but like still above middling, but I think you know what I mean. It's not profound or a hallmark of its genre or anything. Um, it's just pretty good. The uh, other thing, and this one's the only one that genuinely bothers me, I was not satisfied with the manner in which they executed um, Aurora's apo or not apology, uh, Aurora forgiving Jim. It makes sense that she would do that eventually, right? Obviously, but I don't like the way it was executed. It felt very rapid, rushed, unsatisfying, and just unbelievable almost as well. Because obviously she's rightfully pissed off at him uh, for basically destroying her life. And, you know, even though, yeah, his situation can be understood, it's still a very selfish thing to do that basically has no, no real good explanation, right? Um, because you're basically stealing someone's life from them. So I felt that his, uh, he didn't really deserve um, the forgiveness that he gets. Now, again, like I said, it does make sense that at some point, yes, at some point it makes sense storyboard-wise for her to forgive him. But I just don't like the way they did it here. It just felt way too rapid, and it was like, I had to do a double take. I'm like, wait a minute, did I miss something? And I didn't. Like, if you go and skip back, it's just that sudden. She kind of like, her brain switches overnight almost, uh, and it's just very rapid and jarring. So, yeah, that's going to be the only, the only real negative for me. But uh, I'm going to give Passengers a 7 out of 10. It is a decent sci-fi drama with uh, some great actors in it. And uh, yeah, it's a very interesting situation that uh, hopefully you and I will never have to experience for ourselves. Uh, because I'm asking myself, what would I do in that situation? I'm, I'm going to choose a depressing answer. I would probably just eject myself. <laughs> I don't think I would... Uh, I don't think I would take someone out of the pod, um, purely because I, I wouldn't be capable of hiding it, basically. That's like the main reason for me. There is no way I could go a hundred years without telling them that I, I did that. So there's going to be a big fight at some point, so I'd rather just not even do that to begin with. Plus it's wrong, right? That's what I should have said, because it's wrong, that's why. <clears throat> but yeah, passengers, I did enjoy it. Thanks so much for watching, and I